All right, what's up, everybody? We are live with another video. We are live. We are live. We are live. We are live. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How are y'all doing? What's up to everybody in the chat? All right. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Uh, press one if you all can hear me. Uh, press one if y'all can hear me. All right. Let everybody know I'm texting this person husband. I'm trying to see what time his wife going to work so he can come over. So I can bless him with my meat. Just waiting. I can bless him with the meat. All right. So we got to talk about DJ Vlad. But first of all, before we get into DJ Vlad, I said to my audience, I said, listen, audience, you know, I, I was getting dealing with a lot of trolls, a lot of trolls. I said, now, wait a minute. If you're going to troll on the Wiley show, you got to pay. So starting today with my full authority, in order to be in a chat, you must be a member. I don't want to see you if you ain't got no green symbol. Order the moderator, you must be a member. I don't even want you to moderate if you cannot pay $5. So when we financially get into the system and make it financially with big dollars, the moderators will be the first to be on the staff. We'll be the first channel ever in history to upgrade the moderators as team members. All right. Now we're going to talk about DJ Vlad. I need everybody to share. DJ Vlad here is a DJ and he got his start by getting involved with a rapper. And the rapper whooped him or his entourage hit him. And he used that money to sue and roll DJ Vlad, Vlad TV. DJ Vlad is a entertainer, commentator. He used black entertainers, rappers, to grow his platform. He paid Boosie 50% of how much money he makes. So just say if they do a video, he make $100,000. Boosie get 50% of that, which get 50 grand. If it make 200,000, he get 100 grand. So... DJ Vlad, and we all know Kendra Lamar and Drake is beefy. They're in a rap beef. It's a fake beef anyway, but it's real. Mm -hmm. DJ Vlad decided to give his commentary on the beef. He, he decided to give his commentary on the beef. And he trying to get this sister together that was a, a professor at Princeton University, try to get it together here. And he said a lot of stuff about her. He trying to get her fired because she pretty much told him, you know, this is a black thing. You stay out of it. You shouldn't give no commentary on it. Let's read ber verbatim what that professor said, a black woman. We want to thank um, Cardi B, best friend, for putting it up there. Ken Barbie and Morgan Jerkins. Said, quote, you are white. This is a black folk affair. DJ Vlad did a tweet and said, Kendra not like us needed a better mix. It take away from the song. And Morgan, the, pr the Princeton, uh, Princeton professor said, you are white. This is a black folk affair. And DJ Vlad said, wait, so a professor at, at Princeton is telling me what a white person shouldn't be allowed to voice their opinion about hip hop. Is that how you interact with your students? Morgan responded, what I'm saying that you put your opinion in a discussion that's not needed. This conversation is and should center black people, not you. DJ Vlad said, don't try to change your words now. I'll be reaching out to Princeton about this on Monday. Moist Morgan said, quote, 
Semester over and my contract has been completed. But thanks for trying to bully me out of a job for centering black people because you got your feelings hurt. Very retaliatory, huh? Nice tactic. DJ Vlad said this quote, it's called a permanent record. Every university have one. I went to Berkeley myself. People spew ignorant, bigoted comments at you publicly and then act like they're getting bullied when they get a response. Typical victim mentality. Go ahead and take that Princeton out of your profile, sweetie. You just admitted it is not even true anymore, LOL. Then DJ Vlad said, good luck being a professor at Princeton again. I doubt the university support their faculty telling non-black students to shut the F up about anything hip hop related because of their skin color. Morgan said, which is not even what I said. I find it funny that you specifically chose to respond to me, belittle my academic background, and threaten my job, which other responded to you. It's much harsher way, very interesting and uh, very interesting and telling, but you got it. I want to respond to that last tweet that DJ Vlad did. And this is where he effed up. You could have stayed at it saying that you're a white guy. You should be able to talk about hip hop. Okay, I'm with you. But when you try to lie and said, why, I'm going to reach out to Princeton. Good luck being a professor at Princeton University. I doubt the university will support their faculty telling their non-student to shut the F up. She wasn't talking to them, and you ain't no student at Princeton. You said you went to Berkeley. Stop trying to change the narrative when you're talking to about black folks that is a professor. You, sir, got your start for being a culture vulture. Shut up. You're lying on a sister. Say, I'm going to go be a snitch like you is with the FBI to them black rappers, and that's why they're getting arrested. Go ahead and file your paperwork. We don't care nothing about your paperwork. In the words of T. Tasha K., we wipe our butt with a cease and sit. I'm going to blow my nose with it. I ain't stunned you because you're a liar. You sat there and said, how do Princeton feel? You telling your nine block students to shut up. You're not her student. And this is not a university. This is a platform. And she told you that you, this is a black folks affair and you should shut up. I don't agree that you should shut up because that's part of your business to talk about rappers. But what I have an issue with is that you singling her out as a black professional and then try to come for her job because you don't agree, you feel offended. Did you have that energy for Tyrese when you was making fun of, you wanted to pay Tyrese when he called you out, when you was making fun of Dr. King? Say amen or say ouch. Did you get upset when all these other people call you culture vultures, but you want to come out of the black woman? You out of authority. Shut up. Have several seats. You had no right to respond to her, and then you want to snitch to her job. You are a snitch. And guess what? You can't get somebody fired when she already completed her contract. And then you have the right to tell that black professor, Take Princeton out of your bio. Who are you? Who gave you the authority to tell that minority to take Princeton out of her bio? Who are you? You got your start because you get rappers to tell a business and you go snitch with the FBI. Because the FBI going to get the tape anyway. All them little secret recorders, you rappers, ain't got no sense. You telling this man all your business is being recorded. And the FBI, they go to DJ Vlad, give us the tape. They ain't got need to get the tape because the room is bugged anyhow. That's why they able to get you. Anytime you step in that man's office on the phone, it's recorded, and the FBI going to get the information. You think before the pre-interview it ain't being recorded if you don't <laughs> it's being recorded baby if you don't believe it i got a bridge in baltimore to sell to you it's still strong go and sell it if you believe this man is your friend he's not that's why you in prison now all that stuff you shared all the bodies you didn't did he record oh, oh, oh. who else did you think of oh, 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 oh. it's going to the fbi his friends He's no friend of hip-hop. 
He's no friend. He's just sucking y'all dry. Y'all come out better sitting on a black platform like Wiley, but you want to sit on his platform. How does it feel that you got three, three, three choke sandwiches? You in prison. You telling this man all your business. And he go to the FBI. He ain't stunned you. But you think you better than black-owned media because some black folks, not all, believe black-owned media is nothing. You would rather go sit with the white folks because it's better over there. And you're going to get real comfortable. Talk about all them crimes you've been committing. They're going to arrest your high part, and which they have done. Many rappers have got on DJ Vlad and told their business, shared too much. Anybody with common sense know if you commit a crime, shut up about it. Most criminals, black, white, or otherwise, they talk too much. You and the police wouldn't have been on your radar, but you doing a quote unquote interview, interview you call it, and you telling your business. And the FBI, which they sole purpose, the feds, they sole purpose is to lock you up. A federal prosecutor is their sole job to be a good one, is to convict. It's a such thing called as the hip hop police. Brother Nas said that the hip-hop police existed and that the hip-hop police will follow rappers. But we're not going to get into the history of that. You got to be worried about the DJ Vlad, the Popo, 12. He got on glasses right there. You better watch out for this man. And y'all sit there. And he wanted to interview Tyrese. And Tyrese said no. And Tyrese shared that he offered Tyrese, brother Tyrese, 10 thousand dollars and he was gonna make about a hundred grand or two hundred grand or three hundred grand or maybe two million because if you don't know the history about youtube they get the video he chops it up in two three minute segments he make money on each one then his membership get the full video whatever amount they pay maybe 10 or 20 if it's a hundred thousand members you you can do your math my point is he will never pay the black talent their worth. If he's offering you half, is Boosie going to continue to make money off of that video? Or is it one upfront fee? If it make 100 grand, we just pay you 50 grand. But what about the videos for ever and ever and ever? Is Boosie still getting money? I don't know. I'm not in this contract. I don't think Boosie is uneducated. I believe Boosie is very a smart, intelligent black man. But we're going to stick with brother DJ Vlad for him coming towards a sister. I'm highly offended that you decide to come for an educated sister. She have every right to give her uh, her opinion. This is a free country. So do you. I have an issue with that you trying to take it off social media and try to be a snitch and try to be a male Karen and want to tell on somebody because you mad because she totally stay out of it. You was offended. And you feel like you DJ Vlad, who are you to do it? And I feel so bad about these black rappers. They ain't got that sister back because they, they in the bed with DJ Vlad. I don't understand that. This is why I'm not looking for it to be in that industry. Maybe I got some common sense. I ain't going to make it in that industry because I'm going to have to rebuke this man. I'm rebuking him now. Who are you to be telling that woman what to do? She got every right to say what she got to say. Shut up. And these rappers, you don't say nothing. I feel for these black women that want to date them rappers. They ain't worth $2. None of them saying nothing. When they going to go laugh and drag? Where's Boosie at? You can't bite the hand that feeds you. Because I know he ain't worth nothing. Where's 50 Cent? He like to troll Lil' Kim and her daughter and, the, and her eyeballs. Why he ain't dragging this man for talking about a black professional? See, these black males, I speak to their shame. They weak. They paid us. They ain't got nothing to say. I'm saying it because it's the right thing to say. Black professors have every right to say what they got to say. If they're doing it, according, if she was out of order, I'll say she was out of order. What she did wasn't out of order. She gave her opinion. She felt like he have no business said this is a black affair, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. You could say, well, I could say, okay, we good. But once he start jumping off the porch and saying, I'm going to reach out to your employer and then try to spin the narrative and say, how do Prince will feel?
if they would know you're telling your non-black students to shut up, that ain't got nothing to do with that. You spending a false lie. You're a liar. And I'm going to call Princeton and tell him to block your email. Block him. He ain't got no sense. Why you want to call Princeton and bother them about Kendra, Lamar, and Drake? Shut up. Send a check to a HBCU to Princeton and send a check for me for, for me standing up here. Send me a check and have several seats. You need to send a check to every black person because you built your platform off black culture. Black beefs. Some may argue black ignorance. You monetized off of it. Beefs. Drill rap. So many others. Violence. You ate off of that. That's all you able to to have a staff. And I totally disagree on how you treated Lovely T, a black woman. You were mad because she posted your stuff and Lovely T had more engagements than you. Because on your Instagram, no nobody, about two or three people. Lovely T got true engagement. So you flagged her Instagram and got her Instagram taken away because you was offended that she had more engagements than you. You love going against black women. For my thing is, Brother Malcolm said, black women are the most disrespected person on earth. Something like that. And it's the truth. And that was back in the 60s when he said it. He's long gone. And that still stands true today. Now, is I'm the most, do I say ignorant things about black women? Oh, absolutely. I think I, I can say it for myself. But just because I may say here they something ignorant. That can be true, and I can still correct you when you try to say something when you non-black. Lee, stay out of it. Because don't get it twisted for what I say about black women and comedy and my ignorance that I'm still stand by you trying to call that black woman job because you mad because she outsmarted you and you offended because she's a black woman. You may would have gave her a pass if she was a black rapper. But because she a black woman, you your ego was abused. Yeah, you're trying to come for that black woman job. And you know what? It ain't going to happen. She going to get other jobs. There's plenty HBCUs need her anyway. So do Princeton. So do Harvard. So do University of Chicago. There's plenty jobs that we need professors with sense like that lady, that woman, that strong black woman. That got you together. And guess what? She told you the contract been completed. The semester is over. And you trying to tell her, who are you to tell her to remove that out of her bio? If that's the case, then remove yourself, call yourself a DJ. And I rarely see you doing spinning records, doing the one and twos. What made you a DJ? Just because you can sit down without showing your face. So tell me what happened. <laughs> Shut up. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for your foolishness. Stick to your lane. Talk about rappers, but don't get mad when people criticize you. Your opinion is not always right. Your opinion ain't going to trump. Whose side I'm going to take? I take the black woman's side because I'm black first. I take that sister's side because at, at the end of the day, black woman is the reason why I eat. And they can correct me. I take the black woman's side, especially a professor. I need her to tutor me anyway before I can talk good English. You think I'm going to take your side? I take my sister's side. What's her name again? Sister, what's your name? They ain't going to send this to you. I'm going to have to send it to you. What is her name? Sister Morgan. I need her in my life anyway. S somebody with an education, with some sense. And a backbone, heart, courage, authority. Your opinion don't matter. I don't watch your show. I watch it every, I'm not, I'm not going to watch your show consistently. I watch it every blue moon. I'm too busy doing my show because I don't get so oversaturated with rap. 
because I know that rappers, most of them are doing it for clicks and views and streaming. If you know anything about Kendra Lamar, they're saying allegedly that Kendra Lamar is allowing people to do reaction videos. And they're saying Drake is taking it down with copyright claims. But they're saying that Kendra Lamar is allowing it to stay up. Then we also know that they ain't talking about enough supporting black owned restaurants. I wish they would take all of that, take half of that and build in and invest in, in black politicians that want to do for black folk, white folks that want to do and uplift black folks and take care of the poor people. I wish that they take a piece of their influence and join Reverend Barbara and the poor people's march so poor folks can get their fair share. I wish that Kendra Lamar and Drake would talk to the governor of California so he could get him some sense so they can stop having homeless people on the street so people can afford to live in apartments and don't have to live on the street in a car working 40 hours. Because at the end of the day, after you get through with all that, what about the people in California that can't afford to stay in an apartment? They'll make three times the rent. What about the people in Texas that can't afford shelter? They're getting frozen out because of high rent. What about the people in Chicago getting frozen out? Use some of that influence to tell these politicians to make better housing policy for American citizens. How about Kendra Lamar and Drake go both and do a, a press conference and really call for Brandon Johnson to get him some common sense to make sure he put Chicagoans Citizens first, Americans first. How about DJ Vlad do a town hall about putting more investments in the people that he do, black folks, for the low income blacks, they, they can get a fair share of the economic pie that the tax dollars in Louisiana, for those whites that want to start their own neighborhood, I agree with that. Yes, congratulations. Start your own neighborhood. I believe it. But I also believe that you should not take money from the from the treasury that black Louisianans, people from Louisiana that's black, paid their fair share in taxes, put it in the treasury. I don't believe you wealthy get to take about a certain percentage of that to start your own. You want to start your own, in my humble opinion, start from scratch. If you wealthy, then you and all y'all. Put it in your own treasury and go ahead and do it. Start your own. But I don't believe that you should get a head start and take out a big chunk of the budget that black folks that was taxpayers paid into it. DJ Val, you going to do a, a town hall for that? Oh, I forgot. It ain't about rapping or hip hop. Well, Boosie, you say you Boosie bad, A word. You say you bad, Boosie. You from the South. Are you from Louisiana? When are you going to go down there and do a press conference for the people in Baton Rouge and them white wealthy folks about to start a different uh, uh, city and about to take some money away from some of your fans? Are you going to do that, Boosie? Or are you? Because, Boosie, I got to say this to you, player. From a black man to another black man, you an elder, correct? You old enough to be my father. But when you needed your diabetes medication, last time I checked, DJ Vlad didn't bring you your diabetes medication. Who brought it? A black woman. A black woman got in her car. I need somebody to bring me some diabetes medication. Who did it? Not him. It was a black woman. She got in her car. Probably listened to your music. <laughs> brought that diabetes medication. Gave it to you. Then, according to your words, Boosie, she won the lottery. But think about this story. Your friend didn't do it. When did your friend? He wants to stun you in them diabetes. You could have went into a diabetic coma. You had to depend on him. You would have. But a black woman came to your rescue. The, the black woman came to your rescue. She brought it. The same black woman that's a part as being a black woman and who he going against? That black woman's sister. We are all together, black women. And a black man, we stand by black women because again, if you go into civil rights, you go through slavery, 
You go through Africa, the history. Black women is the greatest ally ever. Without black women, there would not have been a civil rights movement. Let's go back to the M Montgomery boycott. Who, how they was going to eat? Black women started that. Why were some of the white folks were able to come and donate it? Because you had some black maids, which were women, were telling the white folks, hey, maybe you could be drivers. Maybe you should donate. Whoopi Goldberg played a movie of a black maid and this white woman. Her husband was part of the, was the white citizen council. And she said to oh, uh, Whoopi, how would I be able to? Be? Well, she wanted to be a driver. She said, well, why don't you just donate? The woman was driving. But a black, the point of that story, a little white girl saw that them black folks were singing and that white woman was standing right there. And all them elders and black, they were all singing a gospel hymn. And that little white girl, she witnessed it. And what did she witness? Black woman standing and them black women standing in the gap for her white woman, for her white mother. Cause they wanted to do harm to that white woman. But them black saints, them black Christians, they were singing them all Negro spirituals. And they stood in the gap. And before you know it, they all bagged away. The point of this story, black woman is the backbone of this country. Without them, it would be a mess. Black woman is the voice of sound doctrine. Go back to Dr. King. Dorothy Cotton, many people talk about Dr. King, but Dor Dor Dorothy Cotton was one of Dr. King's, black, one, of his, one of his only female advisors. He, she was in the inner circle. Many people talk about all the males, Reverend Jesse Jackson and all of them, but they rarely talk about Dorothy Cotton. Brother Roland Martin went to the nursing home and interviewed her. She was battling with memory problems. But he was still able to talk about her. She was one of the female advisors. Women have always fought for a voice in the civil rights movement. And let's talk about the dream of Dr. King. Mahaley Jackson heard Dr. King say that speech many times. About the dream. And Mahaley Jackson said, Doc, tell him about the dream. And Dr. King had ushered in his spirit. He told him about the dream. Now, of course, Doc did wake up because you know you got to wake up. He woke up. We ain't going to get into that history. The point is, black women stood in the gap even when they was pushed aside to just sit on the stage and shut up. They still spoke up. Mahaley Jackson, didn't, she was in that singer. She couldn't be no preacher. They wouldn't allow it. She still stood up. Doc was up to tell him about the dream. Even Mahaley Jackson, when Dr. King was feeling sad in his spirit, he was feeling sad. And Mahaley Jackson, and the doors of Jericho, 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 she started singing. She saw in her spirit that Dr. King was sad. Mahaley Jackson in the church, she starts singing. And when she starts singing, she picked up the spirit of Dr. King. And before you know it, Dr. King starts smiling. And before you know it, he says she has the greatest voice in the 20th century. They tried to give Mahaley Jackson a mic, but that voice was powerful. And then the congregation joined into her voice. That is the history of black women. Black women have always stood with black men. Even with this fake culture war, black women against black men. That's all social media stuff. Because when times get rough, black women still going to be there with black men. And black men with some sense still going to stand in the gap with black women. Most of the pain that I've suffered as a black man to keep me breathing, a black woman always was able to give me sound doctrine, sound counsel. If I'm going to be a smart black man, I would, I got to take heed to it. I had a car that I got approved for. The car note was $700. 
interest rate high, a lot of mileage. And Monica from All About the T, a black woman, she asked me, so, Wally, how many miles? <laughs> 80, 90,000 miles. What's 70, 80,000 miles? Who was your car? No, $600. She said, baby, take that car back. Now, I could have been an ignorant black man. Ego. Women, shut up. What did I do? I did a U turn and I returned the car back because in that car lock policy, you had seven days to turn it back. I ain't wait for seven days. I turned it back in less than an hour. And then I got on the phone with Sister Monica, the owner and the founder of allaboutthetea.com. I said it was the best advice ever. But a black man got to know when to lay down that ego to listen to a black woman. Reason why some black men are suffering when they get good advice for their wife or for their mate or just a, a stranger on the street. You ain't willing to listen because your ego, you got to lay that down. Ego will keep you destroyed. Ego will get you off a cliff. But if you're willing to submit to that voice of that black woman, not in every case, but in that case, when it's right advice, you got to listen. I go on and on and on from political, church, everything else. But my point again, us as black men, someone told me this online and said black men, men particularly, got privilege. You go back to the history, women did not have the right to vote, black or white. Black men had the right to vote first because we were men. If you were property owner, black, white, or otherwise, you were legally able to vote. So black men technically had more privilege than black women because we were men. If you are a property owner, you had a right to vote women black white or otherwise could not own a credit card or without a man in some parts of society you could even own property if you were a woman black white or otherwise so even in the civil rights movement there was plenty white women took advantage of the law because they technically was frozen out professional careers and jobs and you know because they were women. That's why LGBT, I represent the B, we were able to take advantage of that law in the Supreme Court for, for gay marriage or what get rights because of the civil rights era. Once again, because of the sacrifices of black men and black women. Rights that we all enjoy. The Civil Rights Act wasn't just a bill for black folk. Gay folks were able to take advantage of that. The disability community were able to take advantage of that law. Fair Housing Act, we always able to take advantage of the law. Because of the sacrifices of black people and the allies of the white community and allies for people around the world because it wasn't just black. There were white folks that was advising Dr. King. I'm using him as an example. There were white folks advising Dr. King, invested in Dr. King, white lawyers were invested. Uh, Thurgood Marshall, when he, it was a case of a black man supposed to do something to a black woman, and the judge said, no, you cannot speak. So he had to go get a white lawyer, and a white lawyer had to use him being a lawyer and also his privilege. He was able to speak, and, and, and Thurgood Marshall couldn't, couldn't talk, but that white, lady, white lawyer was able to talk, so Thurgood Marshall was preparing him to talk. And that white lawyer, I don't know his name. You can Google this. He now, I don't know if he's still breathing, but he was now was able to get into civil rights because he pretty much did in, uh, injury law. When he was injured, you know, he did injuries and, and all of that, job, you know, that type of law. He didn't really get, he wasn't a civil rights lawyer. But my point is, it wasn't just black folks. It was white folks, too. 
the Underground Railroad, there were some white folks that opened up their houses, had secret areas in their attics or in their basements or out there in the fields that were here. The folks that was enslaved, because we like saying that we're enslaved, they was able to hide it. And them white folks were able to use their privilege. And some of them was caught. Lost their life. So again, if you're going to tell the history, we must tell it all. You got to tell the whole history. You just can't give all the credit to Dr. King, all the credit to black folk. You can't. You got to name some white ones too. Even if you talk about bloody son, you got to talk about whites too. You can't erase. Now, I'm going to say this. I don't agree with banning books because when you ban books, it reminded me that you're trying to, to suppress us not to read. Do not ban the book. The problem is you cannot erase history and you can't erase. So let me ban the history. Don't do it. That's dangerous, especially in America. Let them let people read. And the thing for parents, do not be dependent on the school system to educate your children, white, black, or otherwise. You got to teach your child at home. The Bible said, train up a child in a way it should go. Children, obey your parents. So parents must educate their child before they leave the house. And then you ask your children, what did you learn? If it's bull crap, this is the truth. And if you don't know, you as a parent, you educate yourself too. And whatever you learn, you teach your child. Y'all learn together. Say amen or say ouch. Stop being dependent on just, you learn from that. We got online, we got Google, we got YouTube, we got public libraries. That's free, all this information. So you as a parent, Teach your child too, and you learn. Never stop learning as a parent. Always learn information. Then you tell your baby the real world information. Yeah, this is book smarts, but also you got to learn how to have what we call street smarts. See, my mother never taught me things like that, but my grandmother, she introduced me to the church. And in the church, you learn about history. You learn about the Bible. And my uncle, though some things were controversial, get out of it. But one thing I love, that he stood by his black wife. He made sure she didn't have to work. It was a decision that she said, I had a decision why I want to work or not work. And it, was, it worked for them. And then also, I love the fact that I would still pick up a book and I would read. Many people I learned from. Minister Farrakhan, Brother Jesse Muhammad. Many people, many people that he have interviewed from the nation and then he threw them under the bus. But he wanted them clicks and views. And then he had to come out with a, an apology. You flipped on the nation, but then you want to interview with the nation. And then to the nation, stop going to these platforms that don't represent your teacher. Stop going. That's a sign to the nation. Stop going to places that don't represent your ideas and they speak against your teacher. Come out better coming on Brother Wiley platform. That is a friend of the nation. My uncle was a part of the nation. And I'm from Chicago. You all from the nation of Islam. Go to platforms like Roland Mark and the Wiley Show. And I named some more. Just name them too. That we're not going to throw Minister Farrakhan under the bus because we, we, we misconstrue his statements. Because if you black own media, though you may not agree with the minister, it's a way that you deliver it. And then if you are a journalist, you will pick up the phone and call the headquarters of the nation. Speak to and get a statement so you can get what? A full understanding. I disagree with DJ Vlad when he tried to throw the minister under the bus because what he should have did is say, let me interview the, the minister. 
Let me get a full understanding of what he's talking about instead of me assuming about what he said. And if you go talk about the minister's words, make sure you give the full statement of what he said. It's, don't give me a half statement, an edited version. Give me the full copy. There was a book that Minister Farrakhan, a book about Brother Malcolm. And the author of the book, he wrote, I believe in the introduction, he wrote in the book that he was able to talk to the minister, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Okay? And in the book, he talked about Brother Manny, Mark Abel, Minister Farrakhan, which he rarely do. He opened up all Brother Malcolm speeches that the nation had in their archives. He gave that author full access to all of Brother Malcolm's words, all of his correspondence with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He didn't have to do it, but since he's in charge of the nation, he opened that author up to all of the documents. There's no need to assume if you got if the source is still breathing, talk to the source. Problem with DJ Vlad, he is no journalist. He is a commentator because a journalist with a basic a journalist degree will pick up the phone and call Minister Farrakhan and invite him on the show. That's why I respect Barbara Walters. Because Barbara Walters brought Minister Farrakhan on the show. Even with all the controversy that was going on, at least she interviewed Minister Farrakhan. I respect Barbara Walters on that. Don't assume if the minister is still breathing, talk to the minister. And if the minister, he say a speech, you got to read it. That's why it's about who perspective do you believe? Because Brother Roland said, he said, when I sit and I listen to the Nation of Islam, the way how they do speeches, my perspective is different as a black owned media than versus the New York Times. This is why when you read a, a column or a story in multiple outlets of there is which narrative are you going to believe because you can get me i can represent the wildest show i can see the name i can see minister farrakhan he could be up there teaching on savior's day then brother Vlad, vlad tv he could be sitting there then somebody else from abc msb they could be sitting there all the perspectives they may come from their perspective my perspective is going to come different because i know what spirit minister farrakhan is coming from so I'm going to write it. Most black-owned media write stories with care. It's not with care. And also you have some black media, um, white media outlets that write it with care and otherwise. But my point is, this is why black-owned media is needed in society. Not black-targeted media, media like the Breakfast Club, which we will be talking about. But I'm talking about Black owned media. I'm not talking about black owned media targeted Fox Soul because that ain't owned by black folk. I'm talking about black owned media where if anybody got something to say about Wiley or the Wiley show, they talk to Wiley. I don't have no white balls, no black balls. I'm the boss. And Brother Roland said only one that can counsel him is God. That's the same thing. I concur with that. But you know what I'm saying? So. That's why black owned media matters. And the Wiley show would be greater if all the rappers that sit on his platform would sit on Wiley. But black celebrities got to stop thinking just because they sit with white that they are mainstream. Black folks are the reason why you got what you got because you was birthed from a black mother. You must first come to black media. I, look, I frown upon black celebrities like Boosie that will sit on places that are not black and you give them all this infrastructure, then you come back and say you love black people. No, you don't. Because if you really love black folk, if you really love black people, you will use your influence by sitting on the Wiley show. Tyree, the same thing. If you really love black folks, if you slack you claim, you will sit on the Wiley show. Show me that you love black folks by helping black owned media rise so they can compete with the Vlad, the ABC, the MSABC, MS, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, etc. 
problem is a lot of these black celebrities listen to they publicists that ain't black, some black too, but you paying for it, you listen to them. You the celebrity. You are in charge. You paying the publicists. You sign the checks. Sit your black behind on black owned media. And don't think that we got to kiss your butt just because you black. Because DJ Vlad going to ask you everything under the sun. And don't you come to us. Well, you can't ask me. Baby. You ain't going to tell this man that if you do, he's still going to get it out of you. Because the pre-interview that you think off the record is on the record is going to the FBI and the DEI or the DEA. All of it. Ain't nothing off the record when you talk to DJ Vlad. If you believe that, I got a bridge in Baltimore to sell to you. It's still strong and it's dry. And you can do a backflip on there and drive your vehicle. And I got to just sell it to you. If you believe anything is off the record with that man, no, it ain't. That's the case. Have the rapper that he interviewed will not be in prison today. Say man, or say ouch. Moving right along. These two brothers here, because number one, I'm using my influence. I'm practicing what I preach. And as a person that entertains straight, uh, everyday majority straight women, or claim to be straight, I also am part of the LGBTQIA community. And there is a show called Chasing Dallas, a show that I talk about and I love to watch because, again, I love to sleep with men. And women. That's why I'm part of the B. B stands for what? Bisexual, for those that don't not know. So this is Kesey and 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 Seven D. Seven D's right there and Kesey right here. The one with the frown and Seven they were on the show on Chasing Dallas. They made an announcement, said they're no longer a part of that show. They done. Kesey, the one with the frown, beautiful Kesey said, I want to read that brother's statement there. He said these beautiful words, what he said about the show. If you don't mind me talking, I don't care if you don't mind. I'm still going to say what I got to say. Amen. Oh, ouch. He pretty much said. On Kesey, the writer on Facebook, he said this quote, I've done my time on chasing and I've come to the conclusion that I'm not built for reality TV. You meant to say reality YouTube. That ain't no TV. That's YouTube. Anyway, I'm too private and to myself to keep focused on anything. I'd rather do my music in peace and actually live in my happy and boring life. Thanks to all who supported me while on there, but I'm done. But I disagree, Kesey. I understand you shouldn't do a free show. But you as an artist, in order to be a successful artist, you got to come from being from outside. And you got to be public. If you want people to stream your music, brother, you got to do interviews. You got to work twice as hard to get half of straight people because you gay. So is your man. Both of y'all are gay artists. You just can't be at, you could be at home and be at home on StreamYard and talk about your music. Talk about y'all day. What did you eat? This is the, the industry we in. People want to know about your day to day. You can't be private. Beyonce even know that because she feeling being shaken by Taylor Swift. She out showing her day. She just can't be posting no pictures. She got to talk. So, Kesey and, and Mr. Seven, y'all got to come out. You got to come outside. I got to come outside. I didn't want to do it. But in order for people to know more of Wiley, they got to see you too. Why you think when me and uh 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 Couture Bay when we when we uh 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 did a meet and greet at uh at Palace Station Hotel Casino and we didn't even do it at Palace Station Hotel Casino we was at MGM because we changed it. Uh, why do you think we we have to come outside? We couldn't do no meet and greet in Vegas. I'm still in Texas. That ain't gonna exist. This ain't the pandemic. Get your black man on that flight. We get up there. We got to be able to meet folks because me and Couture Bay. It, we was at the um, at the karaoke bar, and I put my name down to do what about your friends and 90 Love Movement 
she went to another sister. She went to the restroom, and my name was called. Wiley, I ain't know the song. I was I was a little tipsy. Champagne, I got a special education. All that stimulation, man, skip it. What about, if it ain't about holy, 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 amazing grace, I ain't studying that song. But I like the song, I'm having fun. I don't know the lyrics. I just know the curve. What about your friend? I didn't even know that too good. What about your friends? You know, you got to keep your time. In. And Couture Bay, a black woman. You hear that, Vlad? A black woman sat on, got on stage with me. Didn't let me get out there and embarrass myself. I'm sl slurring words, effed up the words. And she was just dancing. Then another black woman, she came out the restroom. She was like, what about, she was in there dancing. Black women. Black men on planet. We took over that place. It was a white establishment. Them white folks were just looking like, oh my gosh, look at all those colored people. One thing about white folks, they love to be entertained by black. We just are the culture. We are the heartbeat and we are the swag, baby. We are the seasoning. We are the heartbeat. We are the movement. And hold the end of that. I said, Wiley, I said, Las Vegas is the greatest MF city in the world. They applauded. And the DJ said, oh, they did the first introduction. And then we left. I went to Piana, Priyana's, whatever, the, the gay club. I said, oh, I said, I'm gay. This is my straight wife. Dottie Love would just shake her. I'm straight right now. And then when I get out here and then I go to the gay club, I'll be gay. And then I'll be back. They were laughing. <laughs> Them white folks were laughing. Wasn't that many? It was a predominantly white establishment. We, we, we were the most blacks. And we called. I said, we, we bringing this person up. We brought all the black folks. It looked like. More people came, and, and the white gentleman said, he said, we never seen these many people at this round of time. It's like a hit in the middle. But when you see black folks, Wiley and Couture Bay, we're going to bring some blacks. And when we come, we're going to travel. <laughs> the black people are in here. And they all showed up, and they packed that place out. And then we went to Payana, Prairie Payana, Payanas. We went to, the, to, to, to Vegas, the Fruit Loop. They still call it the Fruit Loop. I think that's what they call it. And we all went to the gay club. And man, I was just there dancing. I was feeling myself. Hey, hey. I was just dropping it. Man, I felt it when I got back to Texas. I was hurt. But I went that night drinking champagne, just then. Hey, hey. They was recording me. Nani Love, Deidre. Oh, they were recording. Brother Tom, Tommy Gill was dancing. We was just now dancing. Me and Natasha. Tore up that dance floor. We were stunned. Man, please. Hey. Now I start losing weight. I better show this new figure. I was looking for my little man, my little chocolate drop. He wasn't there. <laughs> so my point is you have to go out and network. And then Couture Bay, the white man with money, looked like he got money. Maybe because I just thought about it because he was just white. He just looked like it. He followed us. Hi, guys. I didn't know you all was coming here. You knew we was coming here, baby. You see this cock eye. You see all of this girl up in me, girl. You already know we going to the Fruit Loop. You knew it. Don't try to act shot. <clears throat> I didn't even know you guys were coming. You know, don't go white. If I'm from out of town and <clears throat> you already know I'm part of the Fruit Loop, that's what they call the neighborhood. Baby, you already know it's only limited where this place at. We going up the street. Baby, we... Yes, honey. Yes. Don't act shock. We had, bro, the sneaky link. A sister that don't rarely go outside like that. She outside party. We... we hey! When I'm dancing, everybody gonna dance. I'm not your typical type of person. When I go to the club, I rarely go out. Baby, you go hit that dance floor or, or just move. And then I had somebody, I think Natasha, then I asked you, I don't know if she listened, give me about $2 so I could put it on the stripper. I was gonna do that. He was just driving. Right, I was. And I did my Donald Trump. And then I did my Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris. You know, when she was dancing the hip hop, dude. then I was doing my Donald Trump. And then I was just doing my bounce. I don't know what I was doing. I was just kicking up my leg. Hey, hey. You know, people say my leg ain't real. So I kicked it up. Look, y'all. You said my leg ain't real. 
They say he got false leg. No, it ain't. It's just a little twisted. My leg a little twisted, but it's real. Being that dance. That that sweetie song tapped in. Sweetie, the one that had them cheeseburgers. Tap, tap, tap. I would tap. Hey. All right. My point is, Key C and Seven, you got to market. And let me tell you why about marketing. It was a gentleman at this club that Natasha wanted us to go to. Wow, I don't know the name of it. Let me get Natasha on the phone. Give me one second, because that was a black owned establishment and I want her to say that name right. It was a club that we went to and it was black owned. It was brunch. That place, they need promo, because I got to go back there. If she answered. It was a black, it's, it's new, been there for about two years. I may have to call Latavia. Is Latavia in the chat? I may have to call Latavia. Okay, Natasha may ask, let me call Latavia. Because she recommend that place. It was black owned. And I ain't gonna know how to pronounce it. I got a special education. I don't care how mad you get. A special education. No, it wasn't just, I was special. I was special. You know, that type of education. When you see people with helmets and drooling. Hey, Latavia, this is why I'm live on the air. What was that restaurant, that brunch place that you recommend? I got you on speakerphone. That you recommend it? Mariposa. Mariposa. Yes, sir. That was black-owned, good-looking people. You smelt the energy. If you didn't want to take off your clothes, you was at the wrong place. Mariposa. The food was good. Thank you, sister. You're welcome. Okay, bye -bye. You still coming out here, Wiley? Oh, yeah, I'm still coming out here. Made a knife through the 11. You already know. The, the flight is All booked right. in the hotel. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye. Yeah, Mariposa. Good chicken. And and I had fried chicken and French toast. Good. I had on my shades. This is why I can't wear shades unless I'm out in the sun. It ain't even good for me to wear it at all because they need to see my face. If you do this, you don't know I got a cock eye. I look like everybody else. I took the shades off. I was in Mariposa. And it was a gentleman. Wait. Jen standing there. He was dancing, having a good time. He's in the community. You could tell it. The way how he shake, he won straight. I'm talking. I'm flirting. Flirting. You know me. I'm going to flirt. You could be straight. I'm still going to flirt. Behind your back, in front of your face, I'm going to flirt. So I took my shades off. And that black chocolate gentleman turned. You got a YouTube channel, Wiley. He talk a lot of ish. I'm excited and turned on at the same time. And Couture may say, Wiley called the man. And that brother said, I was on the grind, the grind of Dallas, a show that I watched and covered once or twice. He was on that show. On a web series like Chasing Dallas, this particular person was on the grind of Dallas. I'm saying that to say this, that I wouldn't have never met that attractive chocolate. I don't care if he a top, bottom, or verse, but he said he was married. And since I'm doing this show and since I know who his husband is, I'm going to be respectful. So this is my professional opinion. Respect marriage. I think marriage is honorable and all. But I'm a little ignorant. I really didn't even care he was married. <laughs> I did. My flesh didn't care. And we didn't do nothing. Because this particular person is married to one of the cast members of in Chasing Dallas, a former cast member in Chasing Dallas. So we didn't do anything. But if my mind can be on a, a projector on a big screen, oh, I shot die. But we physically did not do anything at all. And that person, no, we didn't do nothing. So I want that narrative to come out that I humped somebody's husband. I didn't hump that husband. No, no. But my point is, I got outside. I was marketing and stuff like that. Anyway, and I'll be back in Vegas May 9th and 11th. So I want to make that perfectly clear. I did do some humping. 
but it wasn't that man husband. I don't think I had humped nobody husbands. Because the two bottoms that I did hump, they weren't married. Even if they did, it's too late. I already committed adultery. Head for the case. In all serious no. In order to get this, Kesey, you're too attracted to be at home. I'm sorry. If I was your manager, you going outside. Your husband, your husband to be, you too attract to be at home. You got to be outside, especially you, Kesey, because Seven is a little bit more solidified in music than you. You got to be outside. You got to. You too attractive to not be outside when you do music. You are a what we call a sex symbol. If you was in the ballroom scene, you can walk sex siren. So you got to go outside, Kesey. You got to be outside. And I want you all to send him this video. Let me send him to Instagram. I want my member, anybody that watched this, uh, to send this man this video uh, so he can watch it. Uh, give me a shot. Bye bye. Shot die. Okay. I want you all to send it to me. Send it to him uh, really quickly. If you can send it to him, you, you got to be outside. I I'm just being real. I'm being real with you. You got to be outside. Let's stop. Let's stop with the BS. You got to. Let's stop with that BS uh, saying you you are home. I was the same way. I am an introvert. But in order to grow, you got to be outside. You got to have the online and the ground game. Okay? You got to be outside. So make sure y'all send it to him and send it to his boyfriend. Now, another point is, I agree, Chase and Dallas need to do a better job paying their cash. They require so much of these participants for free. They put in a contract and the documentation is a non-paid gig, but everybody don't get money from it. Some people do. The face of Chase and Dallas, J.C. Um, Jones, um, J.C. Jones, he have his own photography. He's a celebrity photographer, etc. He's making the money uh, on the back end. He, I called him. He said verbatim that he have sold candles and he have sold this and sold that. He, my friend, that's a poet, had also got on the rooftop, did a video, et cetera. But with that being said, you got to, you know what I'm saying? He's an exemption, okay, to it because he know how to work it. And he already had an established brand before he even got on Chasing Dollars. But Kesey, you've been on it too long to not have more streams and more bookings because you got to sell yourself. Yet you on screen, but yet you got to sell yourself on the outside as well on camera. And if you, you got to pretend to be something, like show yourself, you know what I'm saying? You got to know how to act. And be that persona, you know what I'm saying? And not just act, just, just show your love and your relationship. You got to show it, baby. We need to see you all kissing. We need to see you all being intimate. We don't need to see y'all doing OnlyFans. <laughs> but we need to see y'all going out for coffee. You, We need to see that. You cannot be private and then you buy my music. We don't know you. Shut up. They ain't going to buy I said the same thing to Armand Wiggins, the great Armand Wiggins. I said, you just can't put, deposit your check and you ain't in the club depositing that check. You can't go out, you next to Vegas, why you ain't at the Hakkasai playing your music and promoting? Because you think just because you got a lot of subscribers, no, you got to work harder. Because the standard is they wanted it to be a hit and you talk too much mess about rappers. So you got to promote and market. You just can't do that on your platform, think them black women going to watch it. They didn't do it because you didn't promote it. You could bring your... Twisted spinal cord self to the Wiley show so they could give you a couple of more streams. The same thing with Kesey. The same thing with Seth. Y'all got to come on the Wiley show. We had K-Star on the show. Shout out to K-Star. Uh, independent rapper and from Atlanta came and we bought his music. Many people bought his music. Whether you pay a dollar, that's a dollar more. And then 10 people buy it, that help you get on the charts. Because you get more points when they physically buy your copy of your music as well as streaming. I learned that when that lay, uh when that woman that did that song, she said when you buy the music, one song that she did, do, she said other song that didn't go didn't do well on the charts is because a lot of folks did not buy it on iTunes. You also got to buy it because that helped you as a, a formula to get a song on the charts, not just streaming. You also got to have people that buy the music as well. And I will argue that you get more publicity when they buy the music than versus streaming the music. And if you are independent artists like Kesey, you make more of the money from the purchase of the iTunes. 
But a lot of these artists, they don't understand that. They just put it on iTunes and go home and hope we get a million. So it ain't going to happen that way. That's the case. Why it didn't happen for Wiley? In order for me to grow this show, you got to promote it. You got to go outside. You got to pass out flyers. You got to talk to folks. And now it ain't just cars now. We in a different industry now. Do You got an Instagram. You got to show them Instagram. I was in the gym. Very attractive man. Thick, attractive thing. was just slinging. He said, what's your Instagram? He it was a sister that I met. She no longer worked at the gym. Guess what? We still got the interaction because of Instagram. My point is, again, you got to go outside and sell yourself. Even if you were, we don't get into that being, you got to go out and market and sell yourself. Not sleeping with someone, but market. That's my little thing. Let's move on. Let's move on. Thank you, sister, for sharing that. Y'all doing all right? I'm looking for something. Somebody picture I'm looking for. Make sure y'all share the live. If you want to be a member, you can be a member. You can be in the chat. If you want your comments, for me to see your comments, you go to X. You can be in the chat for free. On X. On X. Okay, I can't do that. So we're going to move on from that. But we will just show. The, give me a second here. I'm trying to. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Al Reynolds is a. Co-host of Fox Soul, he did a video and he was talking about how much he missed fucking Dineva. Oh, I miss him and I didn't want him to go. And blah, 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 blah. Oh, so good. But he missed some good points in the video while he doing Q&A. There's a reason why Funky Dineva left Fox Soul. He left because of the money got fun. Funky Dineva left, and he said it publicly. They wanted the show to go from twice a week to five days a week, and they did not want to increase the money. They wanted us to work more for the same pay, and Funky Dineva wanted more money. And Al, it is a disservice to your friend for you to leave that out. He left, and you want you begged him to be a slave, and he wanted his fair share. He wanted more. The same thing with Claudia. She do all that talking. They demoted her, canceled her show, and gave her one show with two gay men. And she's so out of place because she don't have an opinion as a woman because she don't want to be canceled by jobs that never hired her in the first place. Women that don't even check for her. They got to do her dirty work. Armand got a key lesson of Claudia because she got offended and emotional when he started dragging her friends. And she made an excuse time when she was violated. It wasn't just that. She was crying, too, because he was dragging all her friends. They ain't of her friends because they don't give her another job. If Vivica A. Fox was your friend, why you ain't in no commercial for no warranty? First of all, you got to put a warranty on them feet. The only reason why Claudia is getting that work because she talked about my eye. So she going to get the same energy that she put out with them feet. It ain't my fault with my twisted foot that I stand on business. So what? I'm standing on standing on business twisted. And one thing I got to say to Claudia, we will drag you in the last segment, Flame Unroke. You're going to get it too. So y'all send it to these people. You mad at Brother Wiley because we stand on business and integrity. You hired this man. Well, excuse me. <laughs> My mistake, Claudia, you don't own Fox Soul. Your boss hired him. Not you. You ain't no owner. Let me show you who hired him. Who hired the person that hired him. Who, go all the way up to the top of the food chain. This man. Who you never see on TGIF. He ain't in there. Sir, what are you drinking today? You know what he drinking? M-O-N-E-Y money. $21.78 million a year. Claudia boss, Armand Wiggins boss, Al boss. 
He's the owner. He's the CEO of Fox Corporation. They the parent company of Fox All. Hello, owner. You know I'm having a dream about your income. And you know what, owner of, of, of Fox Corporation, the CEO? I actually woken up and I inspired to get your income. I would love to have dinner with you, not to serve you no food, but to sit down for you can teach me how to make that money. Can we have that 30 minute conversation, sir? Or do I have to sit on your lap like Claudia tried to sit on P. Diddy lap? I do it. You don't have to put no Spanish fly in it. <laughs> Jokely, I am a comedian. I'll sit on your lap. And you ain't got to worry about my coins destroy your feet like Claudius. I would love to sit in the media. Instead of me sitting in the lap, I bring my own chair. I could bring this raggedy chair to the, to, to the, to the table. I sit, bring it on to the And I want to talk to you. I want to interview you. I ain't starting to interview Claudia. She 50 something years old, still working hard. I want you to teach me the way so I don't have to be about 50, still looking for a job. I want to know, how did you get the 21.7.8 million? I know you was born in well, but can you give me a piece of that knowledge? And, and I want to know, is it a rule in Fox Soul that I must look directly into the camera? Is that a rule? And if so, where's that policy at? And do the shareholders know that an eye condition is preventing someone to be on Fox Soul? Do they know that that exists? Or is that an ignorant lie from Claudia with those feet and flame on road with no flame and she's a flop comedian? She wish she was on Monique Levin's search. Yeah, she really wish y'all. Why y'all only give her own show? Don't nobody want to see that on no screen because it's going to push you to sleep. Why y'all didn't offer flame on the show? We're going to talk about her later, sir. I'm so sorry, sir. Let me let me sit back down. I'm trying to be professional. I'm talking about you with some sense. <sighs> I sit down. Okay, sir. <clears throat> <clears throat> I just want to know. I'm going to have to email you. I haven't emailed you ever yet. I emailed the Fox Corporation. I mean, the director of Fox O or whatever. But I want to talk to you. I just want to know, is that a rule? Like Claudia said, you must look directly into the camera. Is it also a rule that you must have good Wi-Fi? We fit the description. Not Claudia. I just want to know. I'm going to write you a letter, sir. I'm going to write you a letter. I actually got the letter typed up. My staff, they already typed the letter. It's about a 10-page letter. We printed it out at the library. Now, you may see a library clip. I did have a little mental breakdown, but we paid our debt to society. But I went to the public library. I didn't throw any books, but I typed and I printed out and got a 10-page letter. I'm going to send it to your office. I'm just going to say it to you publicly. But Claudia said I must look directly in the camera. Okay, we're going to say that for free. Y'all thought I forgot about that. <sighs> but anyway, Al said verbatim, Al Reynolds, he was uplifting Fox and he's uplifting the um this. he wanted more money. I take the 250,000. Give me my own show or put me on the show. You could get rid of him. He'll know nothing about politics. I actually like Trump. I voted for Trump in the primary. I vote Republican. I ain't no Democrat. I'm up off that Democratic plantation. Hire me. He don't know nothing about no politics. He barely knew how to pick a good dentist, boss. I'm so sorry. Look at them teeth. He messed up. He got a veneer assistant. He didn't get no dentist. He got somebody that put a piece of paper on the wall and say they was a veneer technician. He didn't get no dentist to do it. That's why all the back of it is rotten, and he got all that pain. And he need a good electrician, a good production company. He got a cord dangling out that ceiling. But Al said that he missed Funky doesn't even know he don't. Shut up. You miss him so y'all can gossip and do some stuff on the table. And do a little sniff, sniff. That's what you miss. You don't miss him as your friend. You miss get doing stuff offline with him. And it was some white powder off the glass table. Allegedly. So when it comes to Armand Wiggins, humbly speaking, 
<sighs> he ain't doing too good in this man's shoes. We tried to give him a chance. Listen, I I got to pull out my glasses, child. We got to do a review for him being on Fox. Oh, this is my performance review. Mm-hmm. With my Walmart glasses. Performance review from an A to F. Terrible. Don't know nothing about politics. He's not real around it. Colorist, colorist, he's a colorist. Like colorist Claudia. Um... He don't know nothing about nothing. He don't know nothing about rappers, singers. He don't prepare himself. He do not show up on time. He show up on time. He don't know nothing. He don't know nothing about politics. Don't know nothing about Trump. Don't know the difference between Republican or Democrat. Don't know the difference between state government, federal government, the judicial branch, the legislative branch. He don't know nothing about that. He also barely know how to dress. He barely try to cover up that wrinkle head, forehead. He barely can be sober. But then we drunk. He not even a good drunk. Um, what else? What else? He following the success of Claudia, making fun of Wiley. He say Wiley. He he gonna leave Wiley in the dust. We still miss Wiley on Fox Soul. He didn't thank me because I put it on the website. Made y'all aware of him and all that type of stuff i give him an f i'm not gonna say he's gonna be fired sir i'm not gonna say that sir with all due respect sir the owner of fox corporate or the ceo of of, because i believe your daddy owned the the network but you've got billions worth i think one or two billion sir let me put you on the picture here but we i do know sir allegedly that you're gonna cancel fox so i know i know you're gonna cancel that little pet project that a black staffer said, why don't we have Fox Soul? You did that for Tubi. You know, y'all already changed the logo for Tubi. Or did the owner of Tubi, I mean, the, the, the head man of Tubi, did he change the logo to purple? Oh, look at that smile. Whew. Is that a sign that Fox Soul on his way out? Judging by history, it will not surprise me about Fox Corporation. They build black talent up and discard them for their bottom line. I don't know if Fox Show is a DEI side project. Ooh. Mm. We all know, sir, you're not going to allow Claudia, those feet, Armand, and those bad veneers. Our hairline don't exist. We all know that they're not going to be allowed to talk about Donald J. Trump, the president, the former president of the United States. We already know, sir, you're not going to allow them to talk about President Trump, whom you play golf with some of his people, some of his people in his campaign, some of his donors, your father himself, love President Donald Trump. I don't think you will allow those African Americans, sleepy blacks, I don't think you will allow them to talk about Donald J. Trump because on Fox News, Fox News don't really care about DEI or sleepy blacks. <laughs> they don't really care about a You, I don't think they know, sir. I would say on Fox News. They do segments of saying that I have heard commentators say, if I see a black pilot, I'm nervous because I believe he became a black pilot only because of a DEI just to pick a pick of just saying we have a black man. I don't really think they're qualified. Oh, then also you all talk about California saying how incompetent. Armand Wiggins governor. Armand Wiggins governor is California. He may not know Governor Newsom. He don't know. He even know it was a pandemic when he had to get new Wi-Fi box. But in there, y'all do whole segments of people in California. I remember one time on your Fox News, <laughs> which is under like Fox So all that money is funneled back to Fox News. Take away black whites. DI won't take it away. And who do DI gonna affect? Let me show you who DEI go to affect when they take it all away for Fox. So guess who you will not see on screen? Exhibit A. You won't see him. DEI pick. DEI. 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 Pedal. DEI. 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 So more DEI picks. 
She could have satisfied her husband. D.I., she the first to go. They feel like Claudia, some people argue on Fox News, that she is nothing but a DEI pick. And she would say, I'm a qualified black woman. Dr. to some of them commentators on Fox News. You only got that position because you're a black woman. You weren't qualified. Why, when affirmative action went away, they was glad because they felt like black folks at Harvard only got that because they was black. <laughs> no, we know that wasn't the truth. But I'm just saying, that's what they say on Fox. Oh, who cares about the truth when Fox News said it is the truth? Now, who are you going to believe? Fox News, Claudia Boss. Al Boss, Armand Wiggins Boss, or Wiley. Why do you think Al got his own YouTube channel? Because he know it's sinking. He already got the alert, like in the tent tent. He already hear the, the warnings. He already know they hit an iceberg and waters in the ship is sinking. He already know. You know what Al did? He got him a YouTube channel with production. He know it's sinking. You know what this person doing? He is showing us the studio with a court dangling from a ceiling, showing off his side piece. That attractive man, that thing was just swinging. Ooh, I'm trying to be serious. When I see that man, all the, the flesh come out, that thing just swinging. Jalen, the thing just swing. You know, he need to be in his studio doing about 50 shows because, you know, Fox all on his way down. And then he said, doors go open up. Yeah. Door number one, not paying you fairly. Door number two, not paying you fairly. Door number three with Taraji here, both of y'all going to be crying because you're not going to be paid fairly. Do you really think you're going to get a $21.78 billion salary? If you believe that, or Ron Wiggins, I got a bridge in Baltimore to sell to you. If they didn't pay this man uh, fairly with an education, you think they gonna pay him fairly when you barely graduate from high school? And the only reason they graduated because they have to let people with special education graduate is part of the law. No child left behind. President Bush, a Republican pastor. And he got a college education. They didn't pay him fairly. And when that network go away, Bye-bye. You're going to be hurt. I'm going to celebrate. I told y'all the truth. Are you a prophet? Oh, I'm a prophet of history. You ain't got to be no prophet to know that Fox Soul, Fox Corporate go cancel black stuff. Baby, look at the history from single, uh, living single on down. Anything black on a network, when you want to start something, you get black shows. Even Oprah knew that before she sold it back to the Discovery. Somebody black told her, Miss hmm, Oprah, if you, want a, if you want a network to work, you got to get black folks. Who did you get? Hello, this my dear. Hello. How long so all my life I had to fight? Uh, you got to go to the own network and watch Half and Half Nights on the own channel and talk to your cable provider. Oprah got you black to watch that network. What did she do? She sold it back to Discovery. All the shares. And she only is own network license deal. Know some history. Armand don't know that history. He think he lit with Vidal's. You ain't lit with no Vidal's. That's fake. One bad bite on an apple. That's gone. You already got ache in your mouth. Oh, you can't even say that about me because I'm going to go to your balls. Let's go to his balls. Yeah, I'm going to go to that balls. You can't be in a public traded company, talk about somebody eye that they disabled, and that's your boss, and this is a publicly traded company, which he got stock options or my wiggers. You ain't got no stocks. You bet not say that about my eye. You bet not make a tweet or say my name on there. That job going to be gone. You're going to be out to thinking the unemployment. You ain't going to be able to do no more except to speak on Fox. I was crying all day to be on Fox. Shut up. You crying all day to be an employee. You could come out back, going back to AT&T. Hello, ma'am. How may I fix your iPhone? You went back to be an employee. Shut up. You ain't making your boss, your daddy money. Your daddy making $21.78 million. Or about, are you making twenty one point seven? Are you even making the $250,000 that? Fuck it, I didn't even say he made. Or is your boyfriend helping you finance that rent in West Hollywood? 
Oh, when they denied, when they shut down Fox, so I hope you don't get crabs again. Well, he did, boss. Dear boss, he did that say before he deleted them old videos on YouTube, there, boss. He said in a story time that he had crabs. Dear boss, not crabs on the table, crabs between his pubic hair. Before he deleted the story time, he said that. You could delete it, it's still in my mind. This is oral history. All right, boss. I'll work with you. I got sense. I'll take the 250000 If you believe that Arbonne get that a year, I got a bridge in Baltimore to sell. I ain't going to believe until I see like Jesus, like the disciples. I need to see you, Jesus. I need to see the evidence. I got to see it in black and white. If that man making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and he better pay his taxes, he don't want to go to jail for tax fraud, bankruptcy fraud like this woman. This woman on her way to prison. That's what her show failed. She tried to compete with you, boss. Boss, wasn't it funny that she was trying to compete with you? That that boss, that Tasha K, that liar. She tried to compete with you with the wad as a new team. Does she not know that y'all got Tubi? Y'all streaming on Tubi. She can't compete with y'all. She tried to compete, and it failed. How she gonna try to compete with that? You know you can't compete with that. You got this buddy back in marketing and this machine with two. Come on, sister. Who told you to go do your husband? Was told, oh, we got to do the new tea. And it failed. It was successful. 10,000 people watched it. Why? Yikes. And then you know what she had to do with the staff? This. Notice a termination. They all got their pink slips. Your services are no longer needed. Goodbye. And she cried because she thought the queen of commentary, Couture Bay, was going to go against the king of commentary, The Wildest Show. And we didn't even beef. She, she started crying because she thought we was going to beef. Nope. Sorry. When are you going to have that boxing out for Jaguar Wright? I thought y'all gonna be boxing. You try to avoid it because you know Stormer Road took her and he became a star. He got real deep in that closet. Now he on secret freak off trips with his man and Diana Ross Fish. Back to Al. I mean, uh, Al best friend, fuck it, I need her. He wasn't paid fairly. He said he wasn't paid fairly to work more. And Armand Wiggins was dragging Funky Dineva and he took the 200. If he got the salary of fucking Ivan, I don't believe it until I see the evidence. $250,000, maybe. If he got if he got it, that's great for Armand Wiggins. I believe $250,000 a year, that salary, I believe that's a great salary for someone that's starting out into the business that just barely got into the union because he danced background with a person that filed bankruptcy, <laughs> MC Hammer. <laughs> MC Hammer spent all this money. MC Hammer broke. That's when you broke, broke. That ain't Donald Trump broke. MC Hammer broke. You broke, broke. Anyway, but Funky Dineva, uh, that was his reasoning. Do I agree with it? Mm, in some instances, I do. But if you telling people, can y'all please come on to Funky Dineva and y'all pay $5,000 and I'll do a 30-minute interview? If you got to do that, baby, you could have stayed with, you should have stayed with the white folks. You should have stayed with Fox O over here. If you got to leave your platform to go and do panhandle and have people to come sit on your channel for 30 minutes with only five people going to be watching, uh, they pay all this money because you say you get all these numbers. They will not get that interaction unless you drag in Fox Soul, Claudia and them. You get them numbers and they do a, like a two minute interview or they just sit there like a statue or contribute as a co-host. That's the only way I can see it happening. Now, moving right along. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why do I have to end with this segment? Lord have mercy. Word by mouth. Word by mouth. Give me one second. Let me drink some water. Oh, my God. Just, just, just. Oh, my God. Give me one second. 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 <laughs> Oh, man, 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 man. Give me one second when I talk about these people. 
Lord, Lord, worry about thou, Jesus. Oh, Lord, 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 word my mouth. Lord, give me a second. Let me drink some water for this second. All right. As you can see, that's Flame Unroll, comedian, not a successful one, um, and T.S. Madison, an actress, entrepreneur, stole Kaya idea. She was on Bros. It flopped. But anywho, all seriousness, I want to talk about Flame Unroll in a serious note here. Flame on the road and I have met multiple times in Chicago. She started on, you know, she's on the west side. I saw her coming up. I saw her on the street. She was a working gal. Went to prison. She was a criminal. And, you know, she wanted to do, quote, unquote, stand-up comedy. Met her children. One of them was at the Jeffrey Pub. He urinated on the floor. She got banned. She got booed. Um, they didn't pay her no mind. Um, she humped one of the women just for a check. And let's talk about that was Dan back in the day. So let's fast forward up to the piece of when she was on Claudia Jordan's Instagram. And she decided to say it. Claudia was like, Wally, who are you? I'm going to have to. And then Claudia said, you're on Ozempic. That's slander. We're not on Ozempic. One of the directions you must look directly to the cab. I look over to the left. I look over to the left. You remember that? I look over to the left. That's what she said. This woman that dragged uh, a veteran. I served my country. She decided to go on the breakfast club. And she went on the Breakfast Club a couple of days ago, and she says a couple of things in the Breakfast Club. And in the Breakfast Club, she talked about from November 2022 to August of 2023, I believe, she said, uh, she lost all of her bookings. Because she said, if one person on the LGBT board feel that you are against the LGBT community, you lose gigs, right? She lost gigs. And she said that her family suffered for it because of her mouth, because of her, for the straight folk. And Hope Giselle, do I have a picture of Hope Giselle? I hope I had a picture of Hope Giselle. Give me a second. I thought I had a picture of Hope Giselle. I believe I did. If I didn't, okay, I didn't. I don't have a picture of Hope Giselle. Give me a second. Well, Hope Giselle is a trans woman, trans woman activist. So they led a campaign, and old oh, trans women, they canceled this woman because of what she said that trans women are not women, trans women should not play sports, blah, 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 blah. That's bad information to people that got to feed you and they all cancel her because the same straight folks that she tap dancing for they ain't book her she was getting most of her booking for gay events and they banned her they they put her on the rainbow blacklist rainbow color blacklist so she couldn't get no gigs because of her mouth pandering to the straights and the straights wasn't even fun her. now Did I agree with that? No. But why would you talk about the community, your trans sisters, when they all booking you? That don't make sense. When that's your only form of income is to do shows because you're not doing a sitcom. Where's the Flame Monroe sitcom? Like the Parkers. Oh, it don't exist. You, you, you a senior citizen in this building. It didn't exist. Don't exist. Where's your Queens? Of oh, it don't exist. You want no Queens to come. But you talk about Wiley. You made a bad decision. You talking about you speak the truth. That was bad rhetoric that lost your gigs. That's why you couldn't get by a good wig for the last 20 years. Because you too busy trying to trash people that 
feed you. You don't feed me nothing. What you try to do, you thought that I applied for Fox Soul, and you're going to say, well, I recommend your name. Yeah, you could recommend me all day, but I didn't apply and ask for that position. Why? Because I have a standard, and I don't agree with half of the things that Fox stand for. Number one, I don't agree with them talking about taking away DEI. I don't agree with saying that black folks uh, got the position only for DEI. I don't agree for them talking about the mayor of Baltimore that say he's the DEI mayor. But you talk so conscious on the Breakfast Club, and you and you spoke so against Republicans, Trump. But when you own Fox Soul, who control Fox Corporation? The conservative party. And who do they typically love? Republicans. So how dare you say you're going to move to New Zealand if, if Trump become the president that you said in there? But you were just on his homeboy network. That don't make sense. Shut up. I don't want Trump to win. He going to take away trans rights. But you sat on Fox Soul to give them the money to take away the rights. So did this one. T.S. Madison. Both of y'all sat on Fox Soul. Do you not know who owned Fox? Conservatives. They don't want you to have no rights, and you just sitting there. Welcome to Fox Soul. So, <clears throat> T.S. Madison, what are you drinking? I'm drinking some Starbucks. You never bring up a black-owned liquor company. Armand, what are you drinking? I'm drinking veneers. All that to take away y'all rights. Y'all all sit there. And Al even there with that line in. What are you drinking? I'm drinking Pacento. He taking away your rights too. Y'all have funded it. Yeah, you think they funded it back to the Trump campaign? Yes. But it don't make sense, Flame Monroe, that you're talking about Trump. If you stand against you don't believe in Trump ideas and his beliefs, then stop going to Fox Soul. Ooh, you was a guest co-host. They were so mad at Funky Dineva that they brought in a person that he couldn't stand, Flame Monroe. And you bragged about that. If you so against Trump, then why are you on Tasha K platform? She is a stump down Republican. And she don't like trans people. Did you not know what, T what Tasha K said about gay folks? She called them F words. The same thing you call me on Claudia platform. And you, you want me to have some sympathy because they snatched your check away. Only thing I was kind of sad they snatched it away because you won't be able to get them children diapers. Because one of them is about 30 some years old. He still can't control his urine. That's the only thing for it. I was praying. I said, man. Make sure she get a job back so her son can get some diapers. Because I know that's hard replacing couches and carpets. That man, 30-some years old, still can't control his urine. And yet you want to talk about Wiley. Shut up. Stop trying to talk about me. You took food out of your mouth because you want to make a statement, want to be a Coretta Scott King, and you, got, you failed. You don't know if you want to be a comedian. You don't know if you want to be Coretta Scott King, Dr. King, Monique, Simone, Lunell. You don't know who you want to be. So before you talk about Wiley, you must first look directly into your soul and pick a side. You can't be here on Monday, here on Tuesday, here on Wednesday, Friday over here, Saturday over here. You, can, you all out of whack. And I'm not talking about what you represent. I'm talking about your ideas in your mind. You don't stay consistent. If you're against Trump, stop going to conservative media because conservative media is pushing Trump ideas and making Trump a machine and feeding into the ecosystem. If you're against Trump, stop going to conservative media. And, uh-oh, you love bragging about iHeartRadio. Mm. And the Black Effect podcast that Charlemagne is a partner of, and iHeartMedia got a percentage of ownership of Black Effect podcast. If you talk against Trump, you got to end that too, because iHeartMedia got a lot of conservative shows, and they be promoting Trump idealism, and they be talking about trans women should not be using women's bathrooms, but you own that too. You live in mixed signals, mixed signals. You brag about being on the Black Effect podcast, and that ain't nothing but a DEI choice to say to their investors, well, we do have a trans woman. On Monday, she trans, so technically she fits the DEI. And then that is a failure, in my humble opinion, because when you start 
laugh out Lauren with Flame Monroe. It was a camera. Y'all was on video. Baby, they stopped doing it because the ratings dropped. Who want to sit and see a flip flopper? Monday, he. Tuesday, she. Wednesday, we. It's confused. You hear hard to build an audience. The trans ain't going to want to be with you. The gays say no. And the straight say what? No. Republicans, no. Democrats, uh-uh. Liberals, oh, what is that? You can't even build an audience because you ain't standing on one side. You trying to cater to everybody. And guess what? Everybody ain't catering to you. Yet you talked about in the Breakfast Club how you work with everybody and you never was on the headline because you a flip-flopper. A flip-flopper, tri-flopper, triangle flopper. You, that's who you are. You trying to correct me and say I don't look directly in the camera, but you don't even stand directly into your stance and your beliefs. Your belief changed on the day and the audience that you're in front of. So have several seats until we know which flame we talking to. Hmm. Even when you sat with this sister, this is a picture when these two women was on Queen's Supreme Court. She changed the name from Queen's Court because she stole Kaya idea, trademark without her permission, and didn't give her ownership. And got mad when Kaya exposed her because we all know Sister Kaya is not business minded. And then she changed it to Queen Supreme Court. And she thought just because I'm T.S. Madison, the show going to be successful. But I got another thing for you. They only watch it because of Kaya. Once Kaya left, the show dropped. It ended. You tried to keep that show going. Once the heartbeat of the show that made it go viral, made you more of a household name, once that black woman left, the show went away. Whew, gone. It left. Went out of business. You tried to get funky to do it. That didn't work. He dragged Blue Ivy, and it went down, down, down. You brought her on it. Great episode because what she stands on, she don't believe in labels. This is a generational gap of what she believed. In her generation, they didn't care about labels. Ru RuPaul is the part of that generation. They didn't care nothing about labels. What they care about was just paying their taxes, not getting deleted, you know, be able to do what they got to do and live in a happy life. This generation, my generation, and particularly the Gen Z generation, they care about labels. Don't call me he, call me we. And they get offended if you don't call me we or they. That is that type of generation. So it's a just it's a generational gap. Even myself, I'm more of an old school person in the community. I don't necessarily believe in labels because I look at it when you walk down the street, you just see a black man with a limp. You don't know who I am. And then the certain people, if I have on a hoodie, I look like a thug, say that or say ouch. So just be, you know, don't nobody know you go anyway. You just, they just see, if they just look at appearance, they just see a man. If they see T.S. Madison without her, they say, this is a woman. They see her, this is a woman. It's about what they see. And then when you start talking, then people can come to a conclusion of who you are. And then you can say, well, sir, respectfully, call me we or call me he or call me ma'am or call me sir, etc. But we're not going to know just by physically seeing you walk around. Some people may, you could assume, but you won't know until we talk to each other and not at each other. And I would have told this sister that I'm not on no Zimpic. And then she was spying on my Instagram, boss. She was found on Instagram said, you still go to the gym and still getting fatter and you eat donuts and you're on Zip. Oh, 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 Zip it. She was saying all them jokes, making fun. But did I make fun when they snatched our bags? We were silent. We prayed for the sister. They snatched our bags. Tiffany Haddish abandoned her. She was too busy drinking. They snatched her bags. She supposed to be so rich. How you lose them bookers that you about to hit poverty? Because they ain't paying you fairly. $1,000 a show, that ain't no money. They take that away. You depending on that for your mortgage and all that. And California is expensive. You that came out better doing better in Chicago. On the little parts, you know where they kicked you out of Chicago. They want not book you in Chicago. You went to L.A. to become a superstar, become a struggling star. You not even worthy enough to be on unsong. You're not that relevant. The average person don't know who you are. You don't even know who you are. 
And then you want to talk about Wiley. If you so famous, why are you mentioning Wiley? Because you're nothing. You're not on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, you on Netflix on the joke, whatever that's called. But you don't have your own Netflix special yet. And then you say, I want Joe to, to produce. I want a whole hour. You don't own Netflix. You're going to get what they give you if they give you 30 minutes. I think you deserve enough an hour. But I would help you get it. I really don't care nothing about you. One of the qualifications on Netflix, you must be able to sell out theaters with 200 seats for the next six months to qualify for a Netflix special. Then she said, they give Emmys away like candy. I want a glad award. Glad about what? You talk against the people that glad give. Hope Giselle, you talk about T.S. Madison lifestyle. You, you, you drag T.S. Madison, even with the whole thing, just hilarious. You, you threw T.S. Madison on the bus to cater again to the stray community. But last time I checked, when uh, Jess Hilarious came to the uh, Allerton Improv, she didn't invite you to open up for Jess Hilarious. They don't care nothing about you. They only use you so you can spread and make them feel good. When they got good bookers, they ain't stunning you. Only Dave Chappelle booked you because you took Dave Chappelle's side. Did it help you? No. That was a temporary check. Did you get invited to open up on Saturday Night Live? You will never be on Saturday Night Live. You don't represent what Saturday Night Live believe in. You don't represent into those quote-unquote principles unless it's a DEI rainbow pick show, but they're not going to put you on Saturday Night Live. Not at all. That's just the truth. You don't fit what they want. Just like how you agree, I don't fit the image for Fox. So I'll give you that. But I never applied for it. You and I applied for getting rejected. You apply for this stuff and getting rejected. No auditions. Then you say you signed up. You said this out on your on your on your uh Breakfast Club interview. I know most people didn't watch it. Because they only watched the point where you said trans woman should not play in women's sports. Another bad decision that you're making as a person you represent, uh, uh, um, you represent, you know, the community. So you saying that though is some women that will agree with that, but you can't say it because you try, you still trying to work in the community. You trying to work in the community. So you speaking against and saying that trans women shouldn't have their own sports and shouldn't play in women's because we're not a few. That's bad rhetoric that you preach. I was on a conference call with Hope Giselle. I brought her name up because one of her sisters there put me on the three-way. And they were dragging Flame Monroe. Hope Giselle said she's one of the top trans activists. She said on that phone, she said what this woman is preaching is dangerous. And they need to counsel more her bit bookings. And then Hope Giselle said on the phone, she said, I'm going to call and lead more protests. She's evil. This was right after her breakfast club. And she was on the phone. And she was like, well, you know, Flame, I don't agree. And Hope Giselle was like, when you going to drag her? When you going to drag her? She threw you under the bus. When you going to tell her what she doing is wrong? And this is the, well, I told Flame that she shouldn't have said that and blah, blah, because she's trying to play. They trying to force her to trans, the uh, Hope Giselle and her followers trying to force her to drag Flame Monroe. I say, well, it is. T.S. Madison in a tough spot because you brought her down there to get your mama high. You know, four years ago, she got Miss Mary high. You know, Miss Mary said she a Christian. If she wasn't a Christian that day or unless she was a Christian that was high on edibles, she wasn't just eating that potato salad and them collard greens forever. She gave Miss Mary some edibles, got Miss Mary high. And Miss Mary did it somehow. She don't do, she don't get high. She high for Jesus. Well, you wasn't high that day for Jesus. You was high off them edibles, them, them, Gummy worms. 
And she bragged about it four years ago, how she gave Miss Mary some gummies, edibles, and gave it to her too. And she did it illegally. You don't supposed to be transporting gummies on the plane. That's illegal. Especially with all them substance. With Flame on Roll again, what she's going to struggle, and she struggled all her career, is that you're trying to fit your lifestyle. You're trying to have your ice cream and your cake. It ain't going to work. You're trying to cater to two audiences, two worlds, and combine it for your own financial interest, and both worlds is not intertwined. You must pick a side. And that could only work if you had a solid foundation and infrastructure you don't because you're still trying to make it in stand-up comedy. And then you say, everybody trying to do stand-up, you need to stop. But you open up, for uh, you let Tasha K open up, and baby, all she going to do is rant. And she going to call it wine, gossip, and commentary. So stop talking that people should not be opening up doing Stand up. Everybody should do it. You got an audience, get on stage. It takes some, baby. That's an all day idea. You got an audience and people love you. You can sit there and stand up like a statue there, do it. This brother that you see on the screen here, back four years ago, uh, Flay Monroe mentioned this brother. This brother's name is Rodney Perry. And Rodney Perry there called T.S. Madison out of her gender, called her the opposite gender of a woman. And T.S. Madison said, I don't care what you got with him. But, she, but he said, Flame okay with that, me calling her a man. And T.S. Madison said, I'm not a man. I'm not Flame. They got into a beef. Because Flame make it, this is why what she does is dangerous. Because they think just because they can do it to Flame and say she a man, she a man, she will, and she laugh it off, they think they can do it to all trans. This is why as black men, you got to be careful allowing white people to disrespect you and call you the N-word. Because then that white person going to be emboldened to call all people black black people with the n-word you got to pick a side and then you may you know what i'm saying you can't do that and then you you may can say because i have friends or associates you have to tell them hey bro you could say it to us privately but don't be dumb and say it to the publicly say it to people publicly let's keep this like a, a little secret because i had so i've been around some spaces of some white brothers that will say it in hip-hop and i didn't mind it it didn't bother me it didn't bother me at all because we would say it you know, some of my white friends in high school, they would say we said private and stuff like that. But they know due to me that don't say it to everybody else, they ain't gonna allow it. They ain't gonna receive it. You may not make it to tell the story. But it did not bother me. Still to this day, it doesn't bother me if white people say that's me. But do I suggest you as a white person go to the hood, go to old block saying that? No. But and it's also dangerous for me to say you could call me and I can't say that either because it's power in words. The Bible said life and death is in the power of the tongue. If you preaching that you can call me a man on Monday, call me whoever cast a check. That's what you can call me. Then this person, your friend, gonna be able to say it everyone else, and you're gonna say it's comedy. And then T. S. Madison gonna say I'm offended because you're not gonna call me that. Call me what I identify, and that is a woman. You understand that flame? Common sense will tell you that. But you egg this on, you introducing a spirit that you ain't going to be very successful and you're not successful now. Now, you do have a right to stand in your truth, but don't think that them trans women going to stand in yours. They're going to kick you out. I got that much sense. So you saying standing in your truth and then you still want to party with the trans group. They ain't going to accept you. This woman was on a uh, Instagram live with Hope Giselle TS and Hope got her together. She was offended. They all dragged her. And they're getting her banned from places, getting her bag snatched. She got to understand that you're trying to represent a community and then you pulling it back and then you helping Trump with that idealism. How can you be against Trump and you taking some of his talking points, but then you don't want Trump? That again is confusion. You don't want Trump, but you believe it in some of the conservative ideas. Not only do they not want trans women to play women's sports, they don't want them to play sports at all. Some laws and it say you can't, you have to rep, you have to go back your 
your gender on your birth certificate. We're not gonna do name change. We're not gonna do uh uh real re, the surgery. It's so many conservative laws and flame on roll. They can use her as one of their talking heads, as one of their pundits. She could really be a Fox News commentator because she preaches the same thing that they talk about on the network. But then on the other hand, she said on the Brothers Club, "I don't want Trump to win." That that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. And then she tell jokes to dehumanize what she stand for. I just, I, it doesn't make sense to me. And this is why it's hard for Flame Monroe to find her legs and uh, legs to stand in the industry because she's trying to cater to everybody. You can't. You got to pick a side. You can't be one way with the community, then the next way you drag them, then next way you win. And then you still want to be accepted. I'm getting a headache trying to even explain it. So I'm just giving you my idea. Me personally, it's a lot of things I believe about what I stand. But do I kind of keep saying it over and over and over? One thing that I believe in, I love my black community. <clears throat> One thing I believe in doing for self because flame with that idea you got to work for self you got to build up and i'm glad that you got a youtube channel i think you need to focus more so on your youtube channel you need to focus more so on that you need to focus on so on building yourself up and you need to get somebody like me to be on your podcast so people can listen to it and view it because ain't nobody listening to it and now it's on its way out and if it wasn't for dei that podcast would have been gone a long time ago That's my point. All right. It would have been gone a long time ago. Nobody's listening to it because don't nobody know the people. You bring Wiley on that. Our beef, you can Google Flame Omer on Riley. You see videos of us having interactions. How can that be? And I'm not a stand-up comedian. How can that be? I'm 33 years younger than her. How can that be? You know why that can be? Because I know how to insert myself in a conversation. Say amen or say ouch. I'm a great storyteller. I know how to trigger you to come out the porch and put on your, what well, you didn't have on your wig and you were dragging Wiley. You see what I'm saying? Even this one was calling, she called me, quote, the cockeyed demon. It ain't my fault that someone had allegations that you assaulted that brother. He said it. That was his point. He said that. And then she called me a cockeyed demon that I said she may face criminal charges. I said may. And it says she will, she may face. And she called me a cockeyed demon. And her mama uh, was praying about, you know, rebuking me. And that rebuke didn't go nowhere but up the ceiling and back down in that leaky basement. And she went upstairs, bumping into walls, and went burning up the chicken. But yet she was trying to talk about Brother Wiley. Man, please, go get you a man. Get a husband. Don't be worried about Wiley. Go get you a man. Stop falling behind your daughter and you. she got you going all that stuff that you don't even believe in. You lost yourself. Honey, bye. Okay, I'm done. Let's open up the phone lines if anybody want to call in and give their thoughts. I couldn't believe that. Let's drop a, uh, let's open up the phone lines. Oh, boo, I don't even know. The L, what the, what the, what is the community about? Oh, mama, it's the LGBT. Okay, mama, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm so, so sugar. You don't even know what you're talking about. And then four years ago, you was eat edibles with Flame Monroe. How dare you try to open up that Bible and tell me anything out of that Bible? All right. Uh, 972-674-9462. Anybody want to call in and give their thoughts? Now is the time. So I did not was able to reach your comments. And then I'm going to call someone later on. If anybody do want to call in, if you got something to say, now is the time for you to call in. 
if you got something to call, something to say, anybody. All right. Thank you uh, to X. Um, how do we doing with the likes there? Uh, make sure you all like the video. Did y'all enjoy this video? Thank you for those that have been here. Shout out to our members that are in the chat. Shout out to our family on X. Uh, the beautiful members over there um, for watching us over there on X. And I also want to thank the people that are watching us um, around the world. Shout out to the people that are watching us on Facebook, on both our Facebook pages, on YouTube. And also, I want to thank the people that are watching us on Twitch. Okay? On Twitch. Uh, they said, great job. Was it a good show? If you want to become a member, that is the link there. You can click on that. Uh, for those that are on X, uh, you can email me at wileyshow.gmail.com, and I can send you that if you want to become a member over there or you want to contribute. If those that want to contribute, you can cash at us at dollar sign, Marquise Wiley to eight, Zale Wiley Show at gmail.com. You also have the PayPal information, paypal.com, PayPal me, PayPal me, F, uh, uh, forward slash uh, the Wiley Show. That is all information on the screen. Uh, we got 50 viewers. Ms. Jada said 50 viewers on X. Uh, we Five more, 100. Come on, y'all. Like the video. Thank you all so very much. This was a great episode. Again, uh, we do have uh, more members-only stuff when I'm in Vegas. We will release some members-only stuff there on uh, May 9th through the 11th. And then also, if you miss it, if I have to do a replay of any of that, you always have to catch it on, um, that will be like $10 for a non uh if you are a member you want to do the replay that's ten dollars if you are a member and you replay 10 for those are nine members for the replay 20 um and everything like that so for those that miss it because um that's how it goes okay uh if you still want to watch part one of our vegas review part two of it um that is a twenty dollar entry fee for the replay um let me know i'll let you replay it uh but it's a twenty dollar fee for that um, to watch the replay. Uh, it's very unfiltered, adult only, uh, 18 and up. Uh, it's a very adult censored commentary only for adults. Um, that is, um, on, I can schedule you to watch the replay. So you must, uh, pay your $20. That's for everybody, um, uh, to watch it because we already, did it for people, for members for $5. So by now it's $20. Anybody that needs to watch the replay, that's part one, 20, then part two. If you want to do both, that's $40. That is three hours worth of content. So that's th literally three hours worth of content that we did um, in members only about Vegas part one and part two uh, that we did. Because I thought we deleted part one, but we do have part one and we do have part two all uh, recorded. So and if anybody want to buy it, that's 500 bucks. Okay, because uh, we did have a conversation with an energy company and they didn't like our conversation because, again, we're not going to do a free examples over here. You got to pay to uh, market on the Wally show. All right. We got some sense. Uh, this was an awesome show. Um, God bless you to those that are in here um, for their uh, support here. Uh, this was great support that you all have been giving us um, today. And we will do um, an after show on Station Head. We'll do after show on Station Head. If you do not know what Station Head is, that is an app where you can download and you can listen to our show and type in The Wiley Show. Uh, we could definitely see it, The Wiley Show. Um, you can watch us actually on there. And uh, like, thank you, Tasha. For those who watch it on X, you can download Station Head. If you could type it in your computer or phone, watch this on there. Wiley Show or Wiley Show. I'm sorry, not the the Wiley Show. All right, Wiley Show. W i l e y s h o w Wiley Show on Station Head. Wiley Show on Station Head, and you can um, catch us on um, listen to us on Station Head. Uh, we do interview artists on there. We play music on there. And like I said, if you're an artist. You want me to um, showcase your music? Uh, please email me. You know, email me at wileyshowgmail.com, and I will bring you on air. Right now, we're doing it for free. You know, we're not charging right now. For right now, we're not charging. So do it while it's free. Uh, 
And you got, you got to be good, though, because it's going to be, if it's terrible, I'm going to tell you on the air. So if you know it sound bad, don't bring it to me. You don't want to embarrass yourself. All right. Uh, for that. So this was good. Good show. Thank you all so very much. I'm going to go and I'm going to see y'all live on Station Head. And thank you all so very much. Little black boy, you beautiful. Little black girl, you are enough. When times get hard, always remember to put God first. God bless you and bye-bye.